Uh, next speaker, Dr. Peter Gorovic. Uh, he's a professor of medicine at Mount Sinai. He uh, was in a uh, medical degree at NYU, his uh, internship at University of Chicago, his residency at Bellevue, and then fellowship at NYU, and he's going to talk this morning on cryoglobulinemia. Okay, I think the most important thing is whether you can hear me in the back. <laughs> yes? Um, so, I want to thank you for the invitation to um, talk to you and also to become aware of it. And I've had a major expansion in my uh, database of knowledge this morning, so it's been terrific. Um, also, the chance to see some old friends who I didn't realize hang out here. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about something that I've been interested in for some time. Um, I know I wasn't supposed to put down CME objectives, but basically the title of the, subject of the talk is Cryoglobulinemia lymphoproliferation and hepatitis C. Uh, there's a lot one can say about each of these three subjects, but I'm going to focus on the combination. So what we're going to be talking about is extrahepatic disease, which can occur in association with hepatitis C, which I think most of you do see in your practice. I don't know how many patients with uh, that infection you do see. But there is a fair amount of information um, about immunopathogenic mechanisms for this and also the occurrence of malignant um, lymphoproliferation in this setting. So um, what I'm going to do is use this as a base to uh, go over an evolving menu because there's actually some interesting new stuff that's coming out which I'm going to go about in terms of trying to treat this and looking at the overlap between these three entities, a specific viral infection that can be associated with diseases that we all recognize and um, lymphoproliferation as a consequence of that viral infection. And then th therapeutic strategies, because our treatments for hepatitis C are undergoing a lot of uh, improvement. So I have to see how I do this. Good. So we'll start off with a case presentation. And this is actually a patient that I see. Um, she's 36 to, she was 32 years old when I first met her. And she had been evaluated in, um, before I met her, um, actually the first time I met her, um, was after a hospitalization at a local hospital. Um, so I first evaluated her in October of 2008. And she had had an 18-day hospitalization on Long Island um, the previous month because she had been admitted to the hospital for fever, for hypertension, for dyspnea, she had developed renal insufficiency, she had edema, and she had purpura. And during the course of that hospitalization, a renal biopsy was done. And the renal biopsy is important because the renal biopsy showed acute glomerulonephritis. She had uh, some very specific features of that renal biopsy, which I'll come back to. She had segmental, very large infracapillary thrombi. Uh, but this was not antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, as I'll come back to. Uh, she had diffuse mesangial and glomerular immunofluorescence, which was positive for IgG, IgM, and for complement. And she had a rather unusual electron microscopic evaluation, which showed electron dense deposits, which had an organized structure. And when they looked at the, stru the structure, it was 14 nanometer tubules. She also had an important uh, laboratory evaluation. And that laboratory evaluation included uh, low serum albumin, which is probably not too surprising. The 24-hour urine protein was 2.9 grams. Her serum creatinine was modestly elevated. Her creatinine clearance was 40. Um, and this was not the case previously, so this was new. Um, in the addition to that, there were some other laboratory findings which we'll come back to. One is that she had a rheumatoid factor. And the rheumatoid factor was not trivial. On nephilometry, it was 336, normal being less than 15. So the natural thought will be, well, this is one of our diseases. Uh, her complement level, her C3 was completely normal, but her C4 was almost undetectable. And this is also a tip off here is the C4 was read as being below the limits of detection. And she was treated with pulse and oral steroids, and she was put on plasmapheresis. 